You may not think a fifth grader with cerebral palsy who wanted to dance at his school talent show could ignite a battle over free speech and religious liberty. But that's probably because you haven't heard of Brian Hickman. At family get-togethers and parties, Brian wanted to be the first one on the floor, dancing and jumping to the music. Brian's mom, Adriana, had taught Brian from a very young age to never let his cerebral palsy keep him down, and he took that advice with him on the dance floor and everywhere else he went. When his Los Angeles elementary school put on a talent show, Brian knew what to do. For weeks, a church music team had been teaching Brian a dance to a contemporary Christian song called We Shine. Excited to show what he had learned, Brian performed the dance at his school's auditions. Brian couldn't wait to show off his moves to a live audience of fellow classmates, their parents, and community members who would come out to the voluntary event, scheduled for two weeks after auditions. Plus, with a major hip surgery scheduled just a couple of weeks after the talent show, this was going to be one of Brian's last chances to dance for the foreseeable future. Yet, several days later, Adriana got a call. School officials were refusing to let Brian dance to the song he chose. When Adriana spoke to the school principal, she was told the song said Jesus too many times. As they talked further, the principal told Adriana that the song was considered, quote, offensive. Adriana was also told that Brian's dancing to the song would be a violation of the so-called separation of church and state, a phrase that is frequently used by school officials to restrict students' religious speech even though it is found nowhere in the Constitution. Keep in mind, other students were free to choose their own songs, dances, or other talents to perform at the show. Brian's classmates were planning to dance and sing everything from classics like Eye of the Tiger to popular songs by Selena Gomez and Miley Cyrus. Performances included songs discussing teenage romance, relationship problems, dancing, and violent imagery. The only song deemed inappropriate was the one with too many references to Jesus. Adriana wasn't looking for confrontation. She pointed out to the principal that the only songs Brian listened to were worship songs, so if he picked another song, it would still be faith-based. But she still relayed the news to Brian and asked him if he would be willing to choose another song. Brian was heartbroken. He couldn't grasp why the school wouldn't let him dance to a song that mentioned Jesus. Through tears, he told his mom that since he had already worked so long and so hard on We Shine, the thought of starting from scratch with another song was too crushing to want to move forward. With the talent show just a week away, Adriana made a deal with her son. If Brian kept working on his song, she would do what she could to give him the chance to perform it. Adriana called Alliance Defending Freedom, and together, they filed a lawsuit against the Los Angeles Unified School District. Within days, the school reversed course and announced it would allow Brian to perform his song. And it even revised its policies so that other students never face the same restrictions if they choose to use a religious song at a school talent show. Public schools can't pick and choose which of their students have the right to free expression, and officials can't censor students' speech on public school campuses. That's at the heart of what the First Amendment protects. Yet, First Amendment violations like these are all too common at public schools across the nation. Thankfully, the LA Unified School District did the right thing in time for Brian to perform at the talent show, for which he received a standing ovation from the community. But that should cause us to ask, why should Brian and his mom have had to go to court just to speak freely? <laughs> 